Nice, man. Good to be up here with you. Good to have you on here, man. It gets lonely on by myself. Oh, well, yeah, but you do a great job on them. (laughs) So Uh, what do we have here, Larry? Oh, wait a minute. This is Larry, our video guy, which should be on more videos, so we're going to make that happen, whether you like it or not. (laughs) <laughs> so, uh, but we're here at moreguitars.com, and uh, I am, uh, ex- I always love sitting around and noodling with Larry because he teaches me something every time, so it's pretty awesome to have you. Oh, man, I'm glad you got me up here for this because you know, you know, you I love the SEs, I really do, and especially after just playing that private stock, <laughs> you know, we had, we had a private stock custom 22 special semi hollow body that Brett was just playing up here. I got to noodle around on it. And then I picked this up and I'm, how do they do it? <laughs> I don't know. How do they do it? Well, the, the, you know, the cool thing is, is when I go to the factory, we, I talk to Jim, you know, and we talk about like the core stuff a lot of times, you know, because we go and build wood libraries. And then we just get to talking over dinner or whatever, and we talk about how all the knowledge and everything trickles from at the very highest at private stock to, you know, to wood library, to core and the S2, you know, the mayor stuff, SE, or sorry, yeah, the CE, S2 and down to SE, you know, I don't even want to say down to because just because it's a less expensive guitar doesn't mean it's not great. Oh yeah, for sure. But the cool thing is, is what we talk about there is how, you know, when Paul or somebody in the private stock has something, oh man, this would be cool. And if they can relate that and put it into something like a $600, $700 guitar, they'll do it. You know, and I think that that the lack of boundaries between the, 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 the teams is really cool. Yeah, you know, they, that, makes, that makes sense why it happens. Yeah. Um, I mean, this, these are just, just gorgeous guitars. And I have to say that, that when the the first guitars that we got in, I was kind of wondering about you know the the fact of switching so much of their production over to Indonesia. Yeah. This is from the Indonesian factory, and it, I mean, it's gorgeous it plays from top well. to bottom. It plays well. The neck feels great. Um, they really got the consistency. And I know when we were talking to the QA department when we were at the factory last time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, every one of these is checked by them. Yeah. And then when you guys get it here, it's checked. Yeah. And one thing I got to give you and the guys credit for is the setup that you do on yeah. these. Because, I mean, I have been to other <laughs> places where I've pulled an SE off the wall, and it's totally different than pulling yeah. one off the wall at more guitars or more music yeah. here. They, yeah. The setup that you guys do on these things are just fantastic. Well, thank you. That's one thing we take pride in. You know, when somebody gets a guitar, you know, a lot of people have to take a lot of time to make the money to get it. You know, whether it's a $400 guitar or a $20,000 private stock, you know. And we want it to be like you're opening up a Christmas present, you know. But yeah. a Christmas present that you don't have to put together, you know, like when you were a kid. <laughs> it's not like Ikea. Legos, right, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, But, you know, it comes out of the case, and it's pretty much in tune. You may have to wiggle a little bit because of temperature and humidity. But in general, we ship them. They're set up. They're in tune. They play well. And that's what we want. Get it out of the gig bag or the case, and it's ready to rock. Oh, yeah. You know? So This is just cool. Nothing worse than coming home from work and seeing your guitar sitting on your front patio. And then it's like, get it open, and it plays like crap. you got to find a luthier to fix it. You know, that's, oh, for sure. We don't want that happening. Yeah, only thing so. more than that, when you find the guitar out on the patio and your wife threw it out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, that's the only thing that wor- that's worse. So let's, we haven't even told them what we're talking about yet, I guess. Oh, we that's haven't, have we? SE Custom 22 Semi-Hollow. So, yes, as he so eloquently points out. <laughs> Um, but this guitar, you know, it's obviously based off the Custom 22, so it's kind of all the same specs with an F-hole semi-hollow. So let's just go yeah. through it a little bit. So we obviously have a mahogany back. That's kind of the standard for PRS. Uh, maple uh, top, F-hole, the uh, PRS patented tremolo, the 8515S pickups, so they're built just like the core models, but in overseas. So 
they do the best job they can and, and uh, to get them to sound like it. And I think they sound a lot like it. They do. They the, do. The, only, the only thing that I've ever been able to do, and, you know, without taking one of these pickups and putting it in a core body, because that would be the ultimate test, you know. Yeah, yeah, if you try would. to compare, you know, these woods with a core, you know, if you, you can't really get apples to apples. But when you do compare an SE with the 8515S pickups and a core with the 8515s in it, the only thing that I really notice is a very small touch of, of fullness is gone, mm -hmm. but the sustain isn't quite as good. And what I tell people is like, hey, sustain can be remedied, man. Oh, you know, yeah, you can sure. buy a pedal and get a, you know, a compression, compression yeah. pedal and fix that. But, but anyway, so that's it. And the thing is, Paul Reed Smith makes such great pickups all the way through the line. Yeah. When you start, you know, doing this comparison, I think the one thing that doesn't get said enough is, I think there's a lot of guitar players out there who could take these 8515S pickups, put them in their rig, and they would say that was an upgrade. I mean, they're, they're just great <laughs> yeah, pickups in themselves. Yeah, that's a good point. That's you know? funny. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. So what these have is what... what um, it's the McCarty switching. I, you know, real McCarty switching has a three-way toggle, you know, like your old Les Pauls and stuff. Yeah. This has a three-way blade. So I call it McCarty blade switching. I'm going to get probably razzed about that, but I've been calling that calling it that for years. So what that, compo what that is composed of is a volume pot, which controls both pickups, a tone pot, which controls both, but then you've got coil tap on here. So wherever you have this set, you can tap one of these or both to get a single coil tone. So, and the cool thing about it is, just like we said, that that knowledge that flows from core and and every you know, and Paul up in his you know the up in PTC when they're they're trying out pickups is, you can listen listen just have a listen to this. Here's the neck pickup, clean tone. Uh, volume all the way up, tone all the way up, and uh, the three-way blade in the bridge position. So here it is, coil tap. So listen to this. So the sentence I started a minute ago before I got too excited and I wanted to play was that you don't notice, you know, old school coil tapping you'd notice a ridiculous drop off yeah. from humbucker to single coil. Well, that's not the case anymore. I think a lot of brands are figuring it out, but I think they're riding the coattails of Paul Reed. Oh yeah. You know, he's, he's done an incredible job on this. You know, and that's, you know, I go to the factory and every time I'm in the vault, he comes in and yanks me by the arm and says, let's go to PTC. I got a new pickup I want you to hear. And it's a lot of times it's been single coils lately because of, you know, the John Mayer model and, and things like that, you know. Right. But um, the last time was this idea, and it's even better now. The, that whole, what's the, the new pickup, TCI, is that what yeah, it's called? Yeah, the, that yeah. whole thing is kind of revolutionizing the way he's building pickups. So it's really cool. So I know you came here for this guitar, so let's get back on, on this guitar. Okay. Uh, what, what's the neck wood on this? Uh, these are maple necks. Maple, uh, cool. And they just feel great. I think that, it, yeah. it, you know. Helps so, well, with the weight, I think, a little sure, bit, yeah. for sure. Uh, these are good, stable necks on here. And I can um, sit here, and this thing is balanced. Yeah. I don't have to hold it, you know, sitting uh, here. So that's a good point. Uh, rosewood fretboard, um, bird inlays, obviously. Extremely stable PRS patented uh, tuners. Um, it's really about all there is to say. Oh, it's got a wide, thin neck. It does have. So it's uh, it's not, when people, you know, wide means this way. Thin means this way. So um, that's, it's a, it's a, it's not terribly thin. It's not like your Ibanez oh, wizard yeah, necks, yeah. you know. It's a good, comfortable neck. Yeah, so, um, so we're going to play. We're going to play on our way out, moreguitars.com. Please, um, Check out the website. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tell Larry how badass he is at making videos and playing guitar. <laughs> um, and uh, check out the website, moreguitars.com. And you can always call, chat, or email Rob. Um, or you can email, chat, call me if you want to. But you'd probably much rather talk to Rob. Or you can talk to Ed. 
any of us, you know, we're always here. Uh, a lot of times we'll pick up on weird times and weird days because we just love talking guitars. Yeah. Don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Please I'll don't. just want to give them away. We keep him in the back. <laughs> so, but uh, what do you want to play, Larry? Oh, I don't know. Let's do something a little bit heavier this time. Heavy, heavy? Yeah, why not?